Hello, and welcome to another cigar review here at Living Simply and Fun. This time we will be reviewing the exclusive to famous smoke shop from Eric Espinoza, the 601 Steel. This is the Steel Rod Vitola, which is a 5x54. Uh, it is a Habano Oscuro wrapper with a Nicaraguan binder and a Nicaraguan filler. Um, and this no, is this rather is light a for an Nicaraguan Puro. No, no, actually, I don't know where the Habano wrapper comes from. It's probably a Nicaraguan Habano Oscuro wrapper. Mouthful there. So it's probably a Nicaraguan Puros. Uh, they roughly go for $6 a stick, but you have to buy them in five packs at the lowest, and you a five pack is 30 bucks. So plan on $30 if you're going to do this, unless you're going to go through Cigar Auctioneer, because it is a famous exclusive. If you want to try to do the bidding and stuff like Seabeds, you're going to have to get them through Cigar Auctioneer. I, I do want to say, one, uh, and I call it... Uh, our friend and donator, the one that donates a lot of cigars, uh, Johnny Sticks. From what I understand, hey Johnny Sticks, I know you're watching these. You love Oscuro, so we're going to do an Oscuro today. This is an Oscuro. It's, uh, in fact, I'm finding more and more Oscuros all the time, even though I only found like nine to begin with. I was looking There's at more a like one today. Or 20 now. I was not. I was looking at an Oscuro today, and I pointed it out to him. He's like, "Ah, uh, yeah, that was the uh, La Herencia one. The, uh, that one's been around. I, I'm pretty uh, sure it was La Herencia. The La Herencia Oscura See? Forte. See, I knew about that one. Yeah, that uh, sixty bucks gets you twenty five by fifty six torpedoes. That's not bad, actually. No. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and give this a sniff test. The wrapper looks really nice. It's uh, kind of on the more Maduro-ish side than an Oscar side, but uh, seams are semi-visible. Uh, the veins in this are very minor. In fact, the seams are much easier to see than the veins. So uh, no real ridges. Uh, it's kind of semi-box press, but not really. Uh, well, nice looking shall cigar. we uh, give it the sniff test? Oh, and by the way, the other day, remember, I was telling you as a childhood memory, as we were uh, doing something, I said I couldn't remember uh, in Oregon. Oregon apparently had one nuclear power plant called the uh, Trojan. It only had one tower instead of two. Apparently mm. that was shut down in 2005 or something, so it's no longer. I see. So, apparently the people in that Oregon, was out of left field. Sorry, apparently the Oregonians, or rumor has it, didn't like nuclear power being in their backyard, but it powered all of Portland, is what it said. So, so this has a very earthy smell to it. You want uh, a sniff? Kind of a loamy soil. Do you want a sniff? No, no, you can't. Break it. <laughs> Sweet off the foot, but you still get plenty of that earthiness. Oh, that's a sneezing matter to him. Um, I'm picking up dark earth. Some Baker's chocolate. Now, that's so, all I'm picking up for this. Dark Earth I Baker's don't even chocolate. Get the chocolate. And yes, you meet our mascot, Mr. Moppins. Hey, easy on the sneezing Come fit. On, I don't want down my here. entire face covered in your sneeze. Come on. You're not getting a snack right now. So we're going to go <coughs> ahead and fire these up. Talking about a different stupid matter for a second. As you all know, I'm getting a new air conditioner tomorrow or Thursday, and I have to share with Aaron today something very stupid with it. Because of the little grinding noise. It was on fan mode and freezing the place out. It was turning into ice. And yes. That was wonderful. Exactly. So, um, actually, I think I will try this one. So, um, for some of you out there, we always tell you about certain things. I wanted to share with you while we're doing this review, I think. In approximately nine days, if the doctors don't get back to us for a second Portland trip, I'm going to have to either choose to go to Michigan, which Michigan, Aaron doesn't know, and I will tell him again, has very in Bombay cigars we can review. Very peppery, straight off the bat. Very peppery. Um, that's probably going to die down a bit. 
I'd have to agree with Aaron, but I also got to say this tastes like starting out with, instead of putting Lajero in the final third, they put it in the first third. Nice smoke output, decent draw. The draw is flawless. Aaron, why don't you share it to them that these cigars were boxed for a while? Uh, yeah, they've been dry boxed for a while, so it was a good time to break them out before they got too dry boxed. They've been dry boxed in about a week, and I was like, Rito, we need to smoke this before it, these end up, you know, too dry. And then we got to rehumidify them and blah, blah, blah. And let's just get them out of the way. So these are served with about a week of dry boxing. I'm picking up hints of cocoa, cedar, and it's tasting like some, uh, no offense to you cigar smokers out there, including that uh, one guy who attacked us, uh, James guy, I'm picking up a dry hint of pretzels in this. I could kind of say that there is something similar to that. There's a flavor that I'm having a hard time recognizing because it's kind of just fading into the background. It's like a salty out. pretzel is what it, I'm picking up. It's like if most of the flavors are up here, there's a flavor down here just kind of lurking. And it, it is kind of pretzel-y. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've had plenty of pretzels in my time, so... Um, but yes, this is, so far, is just a fi uh, fabulous cigar talking about... It's like, about you start to catch the flavor of it, and just as you're like, yeah, 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 and it's gone. And it's like, oh, But the finish is nice. The um, finish is perfect. I, I'm actually enjoying this because of that kind of phantom flavor that's just kind of, where am I going now? <laughs> um... Tasty little stick so far. It is on the very spicy side. I'm kind of getting a habanero feeling on the lips. Uh, a little I stinging have to burn. agree with you there. A little stinging burn, particularly on the lips and the roof of the mouth, uh, back near the back. Exactly. Um, and that's very predominant in the finish. It also tastes like a little bit of a... A garlic pizza crust, too, at the finish, on the back of the mouth. Hmm. I wouldn't say that one. Well, that's you. Uh, it's just what I'm picking up. And I'm palate. still not convinced that that flavor that's kind of... The phantom flavor is really pretzel. It's, it seems pretzelish. Tastes like a, a... A light caramel flavor, too. But we'll figure it out as we go. Right, Eric? I like this cigar because it is giving me a guessing game. And I'm sitting here like... What is that? What is that? What is that? I'm going to pull my hair out over it. <laughs> what hair oh, are you Yeah, doing? I've already pulled it out over a flavor in another, another cigar. <laughs> Just so you all know, I made a joke with him before going to uh, Portland for some of you out there. I said, why don't you get a shave? He did. But his, beard, his facial hair grows back pretty damn fast. I wouldn't retrohale on this. It's got too much pepper for that to be decent. Oh, burns the nose a bit. This is like eating a nice spicy pepper, but the nice little undertone is what's making this cigar worth it. Otherwise, it'd be almost a pure spice bomb, and I've had enough of those that this would just be another spice bomb. Big whoop de doo Talking to Aaron again, just for a second, you know. We were talking this today about cigars for a second, since he's trying to figure this out. And, you know, I don't want to drag this video up, but I was telling him that right now the ones that are catching my eye to purchase is the Gherkin Hudson Bay and the Hudson Bay Red Sky, as well as the Perdomo Craft Series, as well as the Perdomo Barrel Aids. Those got my attention right now on my number one list. So, you know. Who knows what happens, eh? I also was looking at, but I don't think I'd want to pay um, $125 for, I think it's 25 Robustos. Well, I know Johnny Stick says he wouldn't mind, but the price is a little high. 
But I would love to try on the after the craft series, the uh, Smoking Monks by Drew Estate. Mm hmm. Heck, if I do what I'm thinking, I might just do that next month if I could get a good deal on them on C bids. Because I should have enough cigars to get me through until I do a C bid thing. You know, we saw those go for a fi uh, 25 of those for 60 bucks, and it's usually 129 So 125 at Cigar International. So. Well, anyways, we'll get into the halfway point of this. We'll let you know how this goes. Is that toasted marshmallow, or is that pretzel, or is it something else altogether? Maybe it'll change by the time that we get back to you all. Maybe. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to the halfway point of the 601 Steel Rod. Depressing moment for Rita. Her cigar ended up on her bed mattress and uh, burned a little hole into her comforter, and now she's sad. But uh, to say about the flavors of this, though, the spice is very well mellowed out. Uh, it's become for even all, more flavorful. For all of you out there, I have no clue how my cigar went from an ashtray to my bed. I think he picked it up and set it down, thinking the ashtray was there. But, anyways, um, very tasty. Uh, some nutmeg notes in here, uh, along with a little cocoa and espresso now, um, and just a tad bit of leather as well. Uh, I, spice is totally gone. I disagree gone. with him with the nutmeg, but of the other flavors, I agree 100% with uh, there's still just a tad bit of spice that lingers at the very back of the throat. Good, decent finish. Um, so far I'm really enjoying this. And just so you know, this is one of the few 601s not crafted by Don Pep and Garcia, uh, for Eric Espinosa and, uh, produced by his factory and distributed by Espinosa. But, uh, this one isn't even an EA, uh, EO cigar, uh, which was, a uh, combination of Eric Espinosa and Eddie Ortega. This one is just Eric Espinosa on his own. In fact, it's one of few where you'll see the E from Espinosa Cigars, uh, which now Espinosa Cigars is uh, es uh, Eric Espinosa Jr. So, and the new current Eric Espinosa Cigars is Lizona. So, uh, these are mostly made by Lizona and Eric uh, Espinosa Sr. So, Kind of confusing there, but uh, it's a very interesting smoke, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Just wish you wouldn't burn your bed mattress. But, you know, they say don't cry, uh, cry over spilled milk. There's nothing that can be done to f reverse that. It's done, it's done. But Well, he said we get a new mat, uh, comforter. Probably mm -hmm. he's buying it at Christmas time, so, which is good. It'll work. Why not? So, anyways, we'll get to the final third of this. Uh, oh, did you have any notes on the flavors? I just said I agreed with you except for nutmeg. Right. I was browsing uh, cigars. He said the Smoking Monk sampler it looked good if you get 25 Toros, five of each. The only problem with getting 25 Toros, Johnny Sticks, you can laugh at me. Same with you, Nick Crawley. Same with you, Mr. Ball. Or anybody else. And anyone else. When I buy a sampler, I try to buy a sampler that I can hoard myself and not share with him. But that means he gets one of each anyway. So I get. Well, if I end up buying months. it, then you get one of each. So it doesn't really matter to me. I, I always share. I gave you 11 this month. You gave me three. By the time that we included the ones that I bought you while we were out of town, you got like 12 or 13 cigars total out of me this month. I got 11. <laughs> or three. You got 12. Well, how many do we have to review that's from JS? Uh, like four. You have five or six, and I think I had three, so. We're slowly whittling it down for all of you uh, people out there. I'm still trying to make time for a good time to um, review the, uh, what do you call it, the Diamond Crown. The problem, yeah, the Diamond Crown and Julius Caesar. I was hoping to have good news by Friday with the surgery date, as you all know, but it doesn't look like the Julius Caesars are... Diamond Crown is going to be reviewed this week because of it. I was hoping there'd be like a little celebration review, you know, because I just want to thank Johnny Sticks ahead of time again. He'll get another thanks, but 
When he donated those two, it was very special to me, and I wanted to hold those off until I got some good news. But, you know, with the doctor being lazy and their administrator and one hand ain't talking to the right, it'll be a while. But don't worry, Johnny. You'll have your review soon enough. I give you my promise when the news does come out with a good batter. And speaking of that phantom flavor, it's still kind of there. It dances in and out. Uh, so, uh, a couple puffs, you won't notice it at all, and then all of a sudden it's back. And I, I still can't put a finger on exactly what it is. It tastes like a salty pretzel. And I was going to say slightly wet cardboard right now, but very mild flavor, and it's just uh, I, out, gone. Even you know, though I'm in a is. bad mood because of my little hole right here. You can't see it on the camera. Don't the thing worse. I wanted to share was is uh, talking about cigars for a second. As Nick Crawley said in one of the v reviews uh, that we did that we're an odd couple. Have you ever tried wet cardboard? Mm -hmm. Rita, to have lived your childhood and not have sat there chewing sort of on a cardboard box just because you're told not to and you're like uh, trust me, you haven't lived your childhood then. Uh, I've never tried it. And I still remember that flavor from when I was a kid. <laughs> it had a unique taste. <laughs> so yes, I do know, or don't do know the flavor of wet cardboard. Well, there you have it. So please look for the final the Kids flavor. put anything in their mouth. I did. And I remember some of those odd flavors. Cardboard being one of them. <laughs> please. Um, also... If you've ever worked around a place like a gas station or whatever and you've had uh, water that got on the floor and some cardboard got wet and you got to pick it up, you can smell it. It kind of has the same taste as the smell. So. Well, please uh, look for the final third. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to the final third of the 601 Steel. Um, and so far, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's got a slight minty flavor that's moved in here. I'd say it's more of a, one of those, not mints, but those things that you, parsley sprigs. Uh, I guess a parsley would work. Uh, parsley somewhat mintish. Um, but yeah, it's kind of got an herbal flavor to it. And very nice to this point. Um, you know, it's been That's the predominant flavor now. It's been, it's been 11 years since we ate at a restaurant that put parsley, but I remember in the old days they put parsley in everything, you know, on the side. Now you can't find parsley. Very nice smoke output. Great finish. Uh, it, it was a nice transition in here. The spice that was at the beginning hasn't been back. So I've counted at least three good transitions in here. Making, agreed, this, one agreed. making this one cigar essentially like three cigars. And I'm loving it. It's definitely something I would buy again. Uh, something I would definitely recommend. Uh, $6 a stick. Heck, that's actually worth it. I think we'll, uh, the 601s come as bundles. So I don't think they come as boxes. So I would even consider buying a bundle of this. Very nice smoke. Uh, uh, I have to agree. This is a very nice smoke. Six bucks there instead of stick, I think it was. Um, it is a very good smoke output. It has a great long finish. Uh, in my opinion, this would be a medium body and a medium strength cigar. I would say medium to full in strength, medium to full in body, and medium to full in flavor. Flavor would be medium. No questions about it. I've well, it's chock full of flavor. This is fairly This intense. is a complex bomb, in my opinion, with one special None of these flavors flavor are we mild. Pick in it. up. None I of these. Said medium. Yes, but none of these flavors are mild in here. It's It's not like. Ooh, what is that? That's, that's I can see this being you know, a cigar slightly for, nutty, but I can see this being a cigar that is um for a starter person would enjoy. The problem is is as I said in previous videos, cigars are hit and miss. This is a hit. However, I wouldn't recommend a complex bomb like the Oliva Reckoning series. Uh, which I've had the 4x60s. They only have 6x54 and one other right now, size-wise. But I wouldn't recommend something like that as a starter cigar because it's just too complex. I'd say that this actually borders on full flavor uh, just because the flavors are so intense. Um, it's not exactly strong or full-bodied, but uh, the flavors are intense. So 
I would say it's full flavored. That's for sure. Um, great little cigar. Definite thumbs up. Exactly. With, with that up. said, I, please add and subscribe with questions, comments, feedback, suggestions. Please just leave it the comments and feedback suggestion nice. That's all we ask. Yes, and if you smoke this or you haven't, uh, if you smoke this and you agree or disagree, let us know. And Again, keep uh, it nice and enjoy, enjoy every puff. puff.